Students, welcome to this channel. This video is going to be about questions came in UPSC Prelims GS Paper 1 2023 from the subject of history as well as art and culture. Let's have a look on the first question. In which of the following regions was the Dhanya Kataka, which flourished as a prominent Buddhist center under the Mahasangikas, located? A. Gandhara, B. A. Andhra, B. Gandhara, C. Kalinga, or yeah, D. Uh, Magadha. So, if we talk about Dhanya Kataka, is located near Amravati in the Guntur district of Andhra Pradesh, India. It is the location of ancient uh, Dhanya Kataka, the capital of the Satbahana dynasty, also known as the Andhras, which governed the Deccan region between 1st and 3rd centuries AD. So, obviously, if uh, it's in Andhras uh, and uh, related to Satbahana dynasty, then the answer will be A. Andhra. Coming to the next question, the next question talks with reference to ancient India, consider the following statements. 1. The concept of stupa is Buddhist in origin. 2. Stupa was generally a repository of relics. 3. Stupa was votive and commemorative structure in the Buddhist tradition. So the question is, how many of the statements given above are correct? A. Only one. B. Only two. C. All three. And D. None. So, if we talk about the first statement, the concept of stupa is Buddhist in origin, then we will get to know that. The hemispherical form of the stupa appears to have derived from pre-Buddhist burial mounds in India. So, uh, stupa doesn't belong to only Buddhist origin. It, see, uh, it was obviously situated um, before Buddhist origin. So, it is a pre-Buddhist origin. If we talk about second stent, uh, sentence, then stupa was generally a repository of relics. Yes, obviously that's a repository of relics as one of its primary functions. Relics are objects associated with the Buddha including his physical remains, personal positions and items he used. In Buddhism, they are regarded as sacred and have immense spiritual significance. So, uh, the second statement is correct and if you talk about third statement stupa was a votive and commemorative structure in buddhist tradition so also stupas are associated with a votive and commemorative functions stupas are frequently constructed as expressions of devotion and as offerings to the buddha and other enlightened entities stupas are also built to commemorate significant events, people and historical locations. For instance, stupas may be constructed to designate the birthplace, alignment, site of the Buddha. So yes, a stupa was a votive and commemorative structure in the Buddhist tradition. So uh, sentence number 2 and 3 are correct. So here the answer will be B only 2. Let's go to the next question. The next question says, with reference to ancient South India, Korkai, Pumpuhar, Muchiri were well known as A. Capital cities, B. Ports, C. Centers of iron and steel making, and D. Signs of Jain Tirthankars. So, if we talk about these things, then we will get to know South India was home to several well known ancient ports, such as Korkai, Pumpuhar, and Muchiri, which is also called as Mujris. So, uh, if we talk about Korkai, then it's located in Tamil Nadu. If we talk about Pumpuhar, uh, it's uh, also called Kaveri Pumpatinam. It's also located in Tamil Nadu. If we talk about Mujiri uh, or Mujiris, it's located in Kerala. So, its answer will be B. Ports. Let's go to the next question. The next question says, which one of the following explains the practice of Bhatta Kirutal as mentioned in Sangam poems? A. Kings employing omen bodyguards. B. Learned persons assembling in royal courts to discuss religious and philosophical matters. C. Young girls keeping watch over agricultural fields and driving away birds and animals. And D. A king defeated in a battle committing ritual suicide by starving himself to death. So if we talk about the answers, then we'll get to know that as per Sangam poems, Bhatta Kirutal means a defeated monarch committing ritual suicide by starving himself to death. So its answer will be D. A king defeated in a battle committing ritual suicide by starving himself to death. So if we talk about the history of it, then Bhatta Kirutal was a Tamil ritual of fasting till death. It was especially widespread during the Sangam age. The Tamil kings, in order to save their honor and prestige, were prepared to meet their death facing north. That is called Bhattak Kirutal. And never would they 
turn their back in battle. It was a Tamil martial. This was either done alone or as a group with the supporters of the captured king. So the answer will be D. Let's go back uh, to the next question. The next question says, consider the following dynasties. 1. Osala, 2. Gadavala, 3. Kakatiya, and 4. Yadava. So the question says, how many of the above dynasties established their kingdoms in the early 18th century, sorry, 8th century AD? A. Only 1. B. Only 2. C. Only 3. And D. None. So if we talk about the number 1, Hoysala dynasty, then we'll get to know that it's uh, appeared uh, between 10 AD to 14 AD and their capital was first situated in Bellur, uh, but later it was shifted to Halibut. So if we talk about Gadavala dynasty, it was uh, 11 AD to 12 AD. So Kanya Kubja, uh, the present day Kanoz, which is there in Tamil Nadu, uh, was their capital. If we talk about Kakatiya, then it is uh, 12 AD to 14 AD. Their capital was uh, Orubelu, which is currently known as Warangal. Uh, so if we talk about Yadava, then they were uh, appeared in between 9 AD to 14 AD. Uh, their capital was Devgiri Pejande Dolatabad in uh, modern Aurangabad district that is Maharashtra. So the answer will be if we talk about none. So this answer will be D. The next question says with reference to ancient Indian history consider the following pairs literary work then author 1. Devi Chandra Gupta uh, Bilhana Two Hamira Mahakapya Na Chandra Suri, three Milinda Pana Nagarjuna, four Nitya Kamritya Somadev Suri. So the question says, uh, how many of the above pairs are correctly matched? A only one, B only two, C only three, and D all four. So if we talk about Devi Chandra Gupta, then uh, it's related to uh, Bisa, I mean Bisaka Datta. So the author will be Visakadatta. So number one statement is incorrect. And if we talk about Hamira Mahakapya, then it was uh, uh, Nai Chandra Suri that is correct. Se sentence, I mean, second sentence is true. If we talk about Milinda Pana, then it consists of conversation between Buddhist monk Nagsana and King Milinda. So Nagarjuna is incorrect. So uh, if we talk about uh, Nitiba Kyamrita, uh, this Somdev Suri is correct. So only two, uh, if we talk about this question, only two statements are correct. So the answer will be only two B. Let's go to the next question. The next question says, souls are not only the property of animal and plant life, but also of rocks, running water and many other natural objects not looked on as living by other religious sects. The above statement reflects one of the core beliefs of which one of the following religious sects of ancient India. A. Buddhism, B. Jainism, C. Savism, and D. Vaishnavism. Uh, see, uh, from the question itself, if we, you know, uh, mark it very uh, care, uh, I mean, carefully, then we will get to know that it is related to Jainism. Because Jainism is one and only religion in which, uh, you know, in killing of insects and all those things are, you know, uh, that is taboo. That's why they are avoiding, uh, you know, agricultural foods, uh, not, I mean, not agricultural foods, but the foods that are, you know, coming from uh, under, under soil, that kind of things uh, they are avoiding. So according to Jainism, all living things from animals and plants to microscopic organisms possesses a soul. This belief is taken even further by Jainism, which others to a philosophy known as Anak. Uh, Anekantabad that respects the perspectives of all entities. So its answer will be B. Jainism. The next question says, who among the following rulers of the Vijayanagar empires constructed a large dam across the Tungabhadra river and a canal come aqueduct several kilometers long from the river to the capital city? A. Devraya 1, B. Malikarjuna, C. Veera Vijay, F. D. Virupaksha. So, if you talk about Devrai 1, uh, who governed the Vijayanagar Empire between 1406 to 1422, is renowned for his contributions to infrastructure such as water management systems, administrative effectiveness, 
military accomplishments and the improvement of the capital city so its answer will be a devraya one the next question says who among the following rulers of medieval gujarat surrendered due to the portuguese a ahmed sa b mahmud bagra c badur sa and d uh, mohammed sa c uh, if you talk about uh, the answer of this questions then badur sa was the last king of mogal empire as we know so badur sa signed a treaty with the portuguese in 1535 granting them due in exchange for their support against the mogal empire so the answer will be uh see badursa the next question says uh, with reference to so the next question says with reference to the indian history alexander ria ah long host robert sewell james burgess and walter elliot were associated with a archaeological excavations b establishment of english press in colonial india c establishment of churches in princely states d construction of railways in colonial india c uh, if you talk about alexander ria uh, he uh, lies in between 1858 to 1924 he is renowned for discovering a sarcophagus in the tamil nadu hills of palavaram uh, albert henry uh, henry longhurst uh, lies in between 1876 to 1955 he was responsible for the meticulous excavations of nagarjuna konda then robert sewell 1845 to 1925 uh, he conducted a excavation at the buddhist stupa in amravati uh, then james burgess 1832 to 1916 and he was the founder of indian antiquary in 1872 and was prominent british india archaeologist in the 19th century so uh, the answer will be a archaeological excavations then the coming question says consider the following pair site well known for one besnagar saivat cave shrine two bhaja buddhist cave shrine three sita navasal jain cave shrine how many of the above pairs are correctly matched a only one b only two c all three and d none see if we talk about you know uh, what are the exact uh, things i mean uh, besnagar sites saivat cave all these things then we'll get no that yes base nagar is a vaishnava cave shrine it's not saivat shrine and if we talk about bhaja that is uh, in pune maharashtra and let me tell you base nagar is in vidisha madhya pradesh uh, bhaja is in pune maharashtra and it's a buddhist cave shrine so bhaja is i mean second sent- sentence is correct and coming to sita navasal that is lying in pudukottai tamil nadu it's a jain cave shrine so the answer will be b only two now the next question says consider the following statements statement 1 7th august is declared as the national handloom day statement 2 says it was in 1905 that swadeshi movement was launched on the same day which one of the following is correct in respect of above statement so both statement 1 and statement 2 are correct statement <coughs> sorry uh then both statement 1 and uh, and statement 2 is the correct explanation of statement 1 then b both um, statement 1 and statement 2 are correct and statement 2 is not the correct explanation of statement 1 then c says statement 1 is correct but statement 2 is incorrect then d says statement 1 is incorrect but statement 2 is correct so if we talk about the answer of this question then we will get to know the swadeshi movement which was launched in august 7 1905 encouraged indigenous industries and handloom weavers in particular in 2015 the indian government decided to celebrate national handloom day annually on august 7 therefore statement 2 is proper justification for statement 1 so the answer will be a both statement 1 and statement 2 are correct and statement 2 is the correct explanation for statement 1 uh sorry so the answer would be a so with this uh, i shall put a end to this video uh, stay tuned with this channel for upcoming videos which will be related to other topics thanks and hope you like the video